Greetings humans, Spinning Mantis here with the first episode of, well, let's call it a little experiment. Uh, when we finished Blues and Bullets, we had the option to play again with Bubbleheads. I think I've turned them on. Let's, uh, we'll see what Blues and Bullets looks like with Bubbleheads. Butterfly does not have a Bubblehead. Be cool if it did. game definitely had a good sort of title sequence. A bit disorienting. Alright, let's see some bubble heads. Oh yes. Oh yes. That is so messed up. So, so very messed up. So I guess I'll try to make different decisions this time, too. Um, try to work some different angles. I think on Completionist, uh, it said I missed like four out of a hundred clues in the first, or objects of interest in the first playthrough, so... Let's see what we can do. Wonder what that unlocks, you know? Total creep show. Here, it's your turn. What? So very disturbing. Yep. Toilet bucket. If we don't escape, I'll be punished. I've been bad. Just keep watch. Okay. What if we're caught? Looks like he has to pee pee. One down. That just is yours and the one in the door. I'll be punished. I've been bad. I'll be punished. It's okay. Be quiet. <laughs> Her head is too big for the bars. <laughs> Just look out, okay? Okay. See what's going on in the other cells. Oh, you know, crying children. Beige. He heard you. Quick, get me out of here. Be quiet. All right, you jerky kid. What is this over here? Come on. That's some sort of nasty altar. Hmm, vaguely looks like fingers. What are you doing? Help me, please. There isn't time to open both locks. Yes, quick. Quick, quick, quick. Oh, what are you I don't. Doing? 
I don't get like the exit is the entrance. It looks like there's only one door. I don't know where we thought we were going. That is really bad. Okay. I have a feeling it's gonna be even more amusing when it's not the little kids. But that uh that goat headed guy was pretty darn funny. The milkman. Milkman with his giant hat. Oh, the dog doesn't have a giant head. Look at that, dude. Just a second. Alice, I thought you were on the day shift. Pie? Well, I just slipped out for a second. This arrived for you at the station. Thanks. I'll put it in the back room, then I'll get you a slice of pie. Deal? I'm kind of in a hurry. What kind? Blueberry. It's a deal. Deal. Let's drop this off. It's not much, but I earned it. <laughs> God damn it, Ness! You gotta be the slowest waiter in Santa Esperanza. Mm. Let's go patient. Okay, Dickinson. Coming right up. Uh, uh, anyway, they catch the deadbeat robbing the pharmacy. But <laughs> there's no proof, so they hand him over to me. Elliot, seriously, I don't have much time. <laughs> okay, my friend. Take your time. If Jenkins says anything, tell him it's my fault. And let him know that I'll continue to keep his agents waiting until he settles his tab. <laughs> I don't think I dare. Oh, snap. Mm. But this is worth getting in trouble for. To think, <laughs> I didn't find my true calling until I was in my 50s. That is so goofy looking. So goofy looking. We're gonna give him all the hot sauce. Gives me indigestion. Here, last time we didn't give him enough to explode his colon. We're gonna go and just nuke it. Done. <laughs> a 
Okay, I tell him, if you confess right now, I finish work on time, and everybody's happy. If you don't, I have to work late. I get mad, and I have to rearrange you. He's like vomiting, he's like... You really said that? There you go. And listen to this, Ness. <laughs> and then I say to him, <laughs> the doctor will have to work late too, and it'll be your fault. He'll be mad. And when he's done, where are we there? So Inside awesome, someone's head? Get laid again. <laughs> he's saying, right? Yeah, <laughs> like a soprano. <laughs> and you know what I did next, Ness? Uh -huh. He rearranged his face. Exactly. You see, criminals are like dogs. Ugh. By the time they get punished, they forget what they did wrong. But a bust up face is Ew. Forever. What a creep. <laughs> oh, oh, how much sauce did you put on this thing, you goddamn maniac? Just enough to make sure you never come back here, Dickinson. Ah, screw you, Ness. <laughs> Your first time here. Hey, creepy right? dude. I like this job, you know. Not because I like serving coffee or food. This job is about understanding people, knowing what they want, what they need. You just have to keep your eyes open. The clothes, the haircut, a little movement, a hand clutching a knife. Don't even think about mm -hmm. it. Not because of me. At most, I'd knock out a couple of your teeth before disarming you. The guys you should be worried about are the cops at the other table. They'd keep kicking you in the ribs long after you passed out. You'd be lucky to wake up in a hospital. The Pretty much. Is, what do I do with you now? Um, I guess last time we did kindness, let's do severity. Now you screw up your life, but I like this job and I can't afford trouble, so beat it now. And if you come back here looking for trouble, you'll find it. Okay, we just scared him away. You want coffee? Mm -mm. You still dating the same kid, the blues guitar fella? Hey, hey, I'm a big girl. I don't need the fatherly concern. Or would you prefer me to date a cop? You know no. I love the blues, don't you? Your dad would be proud of you. Thanks. They're not Jenkins. Easy there, miss. Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> If I don't get some blackberry pie this minute, I'm going to die before this day is out. Can you help me, sir? I'm afraid not. It's too bad. I need something sweet for my last day on Earth. Blueberry pie? Question mark? Last slice. Hmm. You use almond extract? Quarter of a teaspoon. Which brand? I make my own. He has very good reviews on Yelp. Place? Me? No. But you so I'm thinking he boss. maybe had to have arrested him or crossed paths with him somewhere in the past. Twenty years ago, when everyone's head was equally as large. Yeah, drunk uh, Elliot Ness with the big head's gonna be fun. No! <laughs> the bottle's huge too. That's. That's. <laughs> that's okay. That's a bit silly. Harrison, O'Reilly, DiPietro, Dockers. Garrison, O'Reilly, DiPietro. Talkers. Garrison, O'Reilly, DiPietro, 
Dockers. It's a wonderful life. Garrison, O'Reilly, De Pietro, Dockers. Ah, just like stand in the middle of the street. You call your boss. I have business to settle with him. <sighs> Can't even enjoy a quiet smoke. Look, I get it. It's Christmas. You're lonely and you want to end it all. But Santa Esperanza is full of bridges. Why not throw yourself off one of them and leave me in peace? <laughs> Tell Capone that Elliot Ness is here. We're going to finish this thing once and for all. Jeez, I don't get paid enough. Listen, you got it backwards. I'm not here to make my boss come out. I'm here to stop you getting in. <laughs> I hope you asked Santa Claus for crutches. Because if you don't <laughs> do what I say, they're going to be the perfect gift for you. Maybe I can borrow <laughs> a pair from your buddy, Dockers. I hear he's never gonna need him again. You shouldn't have brought that up. Oh no? You gonna cry now? Hey, come on. It's Christmas. That would have been a good weapon model, but... At the front gate! It's Ness! Okay. Put down your weapons. You'll get a fair trial. <laughs> You're dead. Oh man, the funky disco dance. That was bad. We need more men. He's here. He's here. Oh no. He looks like a little baby with the big head. Come on. Ah, died again. I don't think I had this much trouble the first time. He shot Vinny. Go ahead. Well, this is this one's kind of a pain in the butt. I 
guess maybe we should wait. The last one until we heal up. Okay, we're fully healed. Dead, they don't have giant heads. Interesting. I guess that was rendered separately, like just uh, rendered as a separate cutscene. It's actually not. Running through it. In game. Well, he's got a big head there. It's weird. Dead guys don't have big heads. Appreciate the uh, relatively quick load times. All right, Drunky Capones. Once again, we're Drunky Capones. That may be one of the things we didn't look at the first time because I think we we're a bit preoccupied. So there's that painting. I'm pretty sure we looked at this stuff, right? Capone and his kids. Nice kid. So. I thought there were some boots or something. Have any last words? You come into my house? You destroyed my family. You killed my men. You killed my friends. Would you kill an unarmed man? You, Elliot Ness? That Elliot Ness is dead. You killed him yourself. Papa! Vittorio! Are you gonna kill me in front of my son? Yeah. That stain Actually, Capone looks better with the giant head. Denunzio, one of my best men. I told him to take care of the butcher on East Main. One of the jerks who'd been screwing with me for months. We had to make an example of him. Send a message to the other storekeepers. Maybe I need to send a message uh, to the other criminals with you. He did it while the butcher's daughter was watching. I'd be like, Vittorio, go back into the other room and close the door. Don't come back in. We have to protect the innocence of children. Keep them far, far away from certain experiences. Your son should know what kind of monster his father is. I can't think of a better life lesson. Look, Vittorio. <laughs> His hand's shaking. Booze turns men into cowards. You'll be like your father. Never drink. It's funny, huh? The white knight of the Volstead Act gets licked up to kill the king of bootleg booze. Relax, son. Nobody's going to kill anybody. 
I'd love to introduce you to a girl your age, Vittorio. Her name is Claire Dockers, and she sings like an angel. You two would get along. Two days ago, Claire's father caught up with yours in a warehouse. Your father was hitting innocent people, and that's not right. He told him to stop, but your father ignored him and pulled out a gun to shoot him. Claire's so it's definitely a different uh, his gun first and fired, but the bullet choice jammed. and decision your there. Your father killed Claire's father in cold blood. He kicked him in the face so many times, not even Claire herself would have recognized him. You'll never prove I killed Dacus. I know, and that's why I'm here. But now I know I'm better than you. Your father is a murderer, and Claire hasn't stopped crying these last two days, all because of him. Never forget that, Vittorio. Ugh! Hold it. Let him go. Let him go. Run, Ness, and forget I exist, or I'll have to report what you just did. And I do have witnesses. You hear me, Ness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the presence where people also have giant heads. Mm -mm -mm. That's some first class pie. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. My car is parked outside. If you could join me as soon as possible, I'll be doubly grateful. Gentlemen, I'm closing up. Time to move along. So early? What are you talking about, man? Are you serious? Hmm. Did we lie last time? I said get out. Hey, fuck you, Ness. I'm not paying you a cent. You just lost a customer. But just That's kind of what point. I gain in quality of life. All right. Gotta wonder if there are any clues I missed. And that's how a bullet turns into a boomerang. Ah, oh, right back at ya. Osmond Burke, condemned rapist of Vermont. Okay. Let's just make sure we pick up every clue. Every clue. <laughs> it says WC, that's where that's like a British thing. The WC. Was there anything else in his... Eh. Eh. Alright, well, let me fast forward through this stuff. And that's our whole story in a nutshell. It's seen better days, like a lot of us. Okay, you don't want to sit there? You're just going to comment on it? Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can't go here. I do wish it would let you exit out of some of those things. So good, yes. <laughs> I think I mentioned in our first playthrough that it is a digital printout, clearly, <laughs> which obviously is anachronistic. 
Okay, is there anything else? In the diner. Turn it off. Yeah. And there's all the missing children. Obviously, part of what's going on. It won't let me. Won't let me walk anywhere else other than where we're supposed to go. At last, Mr. Ness. Please get in. Mm -hmm. How do I know this isn't a trap? How do I know you can be trusted? You just kicked your customers out in the middle of their meal. Please get in. I can't afford for you to catch a cold. Catch a cold. All right, then. Very pretty. Yes, all the bubble heads. We'll be going up in a couple of minutes. I'll wait for you in the cable car. Up where? Oh, the hats. Hats are something special. Hats and the masks are kind of bananas. <laughs> so goofy. The Hindenburg, her forced landing in New Jersey, almost cost the lives of over 100 passengers. City. So, just about that, um, there was no city there, it was just an airfield, um, so, no, it wouldn't have burned down, uh, obviously it didn't burn down anything, it was, it was just a field, um, where blimps landed and planes landed, you know, like a, an airport, an old timey airport. You could still go there. It's a uh, Air Force base, I think, maybe a decommissioned Air Force base. So, buddy. Hey, Ryan, owner of Ryan Hotels, the visionary who transformed the Hindenburg into the to aeronautical luxury it is today. I wonder what that tunnel is for. People coming back? It's uh, arrivals. I'm just going to do this because there's got to be some sort of achievement for it. I have to figure. Yeah. It doesn't really look like there's a whole lot more that can be done up in here. Okay, let's go.
<laughs> so weird. So weird. Like there are palm trees reflected in the something on the floor there too. Yeah, I think I noticed before. Since I was a kid, I like to keep my feet on the ground. <laughs> that makes two of us. I see we're bonding. If you need a paper bag, I have one. How high does this thing go? It's really just an open thing. Yeah, it stuck my head out. No oh, biggie. All right, here we are. Don't know if I mentioned kind of like sort of that entrance way. Kind of feels like going into a Rapture. And uh, obviously the Andrew Ryan reference before. Okay. Wonder, gotta wonder. Do we miss any clues here before? Okay then, their collision is on. Collision is on. Collisions on. Hello, big hit of people. So gray. I'm afraid I can't come with you. Thanks for the pie. But welcome to the Grand Hindenburg Hotel. My name is Susan, and I'm glad to be of service. Your name, please. <laughs> Ness, Elliot Ness. Thank you, Mr. Ness. Nice choice. Sounds genuine. And now, <laughs> how can I help you? I'm here to see Mr. Capone. There's no Mr. Capone here, Mr. Ness. Listen, Susan, I know more than 60 aliases for Al Capone, so you have two options. One is to delay my appointment with him until I guess the right one, which he is not going to like. The other is to send me through and earn my eternal gratitude and his. Your call. <sighs> He's... He's in the presidential suite. Top floor at the end of the red carpet. Thank you, Susan. Have a pleasant stay at the Grand Hindenburg Hotel, Mr. Ness. So... Your attention, please. The cable car to Santa Esperanza leaves in three minutes. Shit. You think it's going to be a quiet day and suddenly the storm hits you? Luxury. Wah! No. Yeah. I don't know what that bullshit was. Titus Andronicus, Penny's cameo. You can't go in there, sir. They're in rehearsal. Theater? Shakespeare's Titus Andronicus. They open in a couple of nights. Perhaps Mr. Capone can get you a ticket? Capone? He's at this hotel? Gosh, I'd heard the opposite. Oh, you so sassy. You so sassy, Elliot Ness. It's kind of annoying that you're really on this kind of track. You can't really move a lot of places. Forces you. Nope, we can't go over there.
So, anything else we can go and look at? forces you to go in one very exact direction. So hoping we could uh, figure out a way to walk backwards up the stairs. That would be cool. Your attention please. The cable car to Santa Esperanza leaves in two minutes. Don't think I missed any other clues right around here. Nope, another place I can't go. He barely makes it through these gates. Hey Ryan. Yep. Owner of Ryan Hotels, the visionary who turned said that. Hindenburg into the monument to Aaron Really does look like he's choking himself. Deserve every cent they make. I wouldn't do it for all the money in the world. He's so cold, Elliot Ness. Cold as ice. Wonder if there's a fourth one. Damn. Come on. Not creepy at all. And super extra creepy. Well, hello, you weren't there a minute ago. Yeah, good thing no one else is in the elevator. Jeez. There's not enough room for all of our heads. Creepy hair Sephora look like. What happened here? Nothing to worry about, my good man. What happens on the Hindenburg stays on the Hindenburg. We're making wine. Mm -hmm. Um. 
high here? We're too high up, my good man. The law has always preferred to look down. Hmm. You never had problems with the police? Oh, many a one, my good man. In fact, what I'm cleaning up is today's first problem. <sighs> Yikes. How can you work in a place like this? <laughs> You don't want to know where I worked before this, my good man. Worse. Okay. So, the event that happens after this, I wonder if you can change it. Let's see if we can just walk... Let's see if we can just walk by, uh... Carnival thing happening over there. I'm pretty sure the game is not going to let us skip it. Okay, yeah, get it. She's a normal size head. Bravo. Oh my god. You can't avoid it. And that was such a dumb move. Oh my goodness gracious. How stupid was that? I'm sorry. A guy throw knives, you go up behind him and scare him. Wow. That was really, really quite stupid. Really, really, really quite stupid. If it wasn't for my habit of checking all possible exits when I walk into the lion's den, I'd be a dead man. Mm hmm I hear you, Hoss. I hear you. Looks like he's got a yarmulke on. That's exactly what I've been doing for the last 19 and a half years. You'll be surprised what a little good behavior can do for a person. Yeah, not gonna ask me for my last words this time. I'm a lot closer to death than when I last saw you. As are you. Not close enough. Hmm? Huh? Close enough for who? If you knew how often I've dreamt of you dying, you'd never have called me. Look, uh, I didn't ask you here to find out who's got the snappiest comebacks. I want to hire you. What? I require your services as a detective. <laughs> I don't know what your game is, but if your plan was to surprise me, you've succeeded. Look, Ness. My granddaughter Sophia has been kidnapped. When what happened to my son, Vittorio, I, uh, I put her in so What happened to his son, I wonder? She was entered under a false surname, Colombo. Nobody knows who she is. Nobody? Eh, only Milton. The man who brought you here. I trust him completely. Two days ago, a guy turned up at the boarding school. He introduced himself as Guido Colombo, the girl's uncle, and her new legal guardian. He said her parents yeah. had just died in a tragic automobile accident. He produced all the relevant papers, driver's license, the custody document supposedly made out by the father, the death certificates. He uh, explained away the fact that the girl didn't know him by saying he moved to Seattle before she was born. 
Any clues? Nah. Well, Sophia was wearing a blue dress with flowers that I personally ordered for her from Italy. Uh, she was also wearing white ballet shoes with daisies embroidered on them. Creepy and face. The, guys, the school principal said he was tall and slim, uh, in his 50s. No particular accent. Black hair. He definitely wasn't from New Jersey, no man. Well dressed. Could be anyone. But I know he was hired by one of my old associates. Someone wants to finish me once and for all. Maybe they want control of what's left of my organization. Maybe they hate my guts. And I thought I was the only <sighs> Maybe one. Maybe it's us. You after 20 years. What else have you got? I got this. And I got you. You don't have me. My place is at my diner. And your girl's not there. Huh. So where should I be looking? I'm not a cop anymore. Call the station. Maybe that dungeon's under the diner. Serious? The cops are rotten to the core. I should know. I help make them that way. So why me? Twenty years ago, I pushed you to the edge. I bought your friends and killed the ones who couldn't be bought. I got you so obsessed with me that your wife ended up leaving you. When you had nothing left, you walked into my house, shot my bodyguards, and pointed a gun at me. You could have killed me. But you chose to take it out on this piano. Hmm. You're the only honest man I know. I'm not going to help you. I'm not asking you to help me. I'm asking you to rescue a little girl. Forget that her surname is Capone. Her name is Sophia. She's eight years old and smart as a whip. Okay, okay, you win. I'll help. She so can't really make not any different you, choices. It's not her. making any difference what I'm choosing. But I want something in return. A tiny As bit of see, dialogue. Sure Ask. I won't haggle. So last time we to donation to exile Esperanza and the country forever. It's a deal. I always wanted to die in Sicily, but that's the least of my worries. I don't give a damn what happens to me, Ness. You just save Sophia. And you can start by investigating Carlo Baccarini. How did you know? Biggest forger in Santa Esperanza. Wouldn't surprise me if Sophia's so-called uncle's papers were made by him. Besides, he's been cursing your name ever since we put you in jail. Talks with his hands hey, a lot. I treated him like a son. After you killed his parents. They were selling booze without my permission. Wait, you know where to find them? I have a good contact at the station. A girl. Rookie. Straight arrow. Reliable. A girl? You saying you trust her? You are such a chauvinist. Do you trust me? Deal? Punch him. Deal. Oh, you son of a bitch. Keep Milton informed at all times, huh? You hear me? Seems like we can't make any difference. I know you. So just somewhere. go for it. Well, that is going to be all for this episode of Bubblehead Blues and Bullets. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, appreciate it. If you like and subscribe, uh, um, I definitely appreciate it. If you like and subscribe, let me know if this is worth doing for more episodes or not. That's going to be all for now. Spin Mantis out. Namaste.